21 degrees, blue sky, and I still have the Norton. I'm going to head off and meet Monica for lunch in the little Kent village of Ainsford, the Garden of England. After that, I have no idea where I'm going to go. I'll just, I think today I'll just go where the wind takes me. I've got nothing specific to do, so I'll take you with me. I was just chatting to a neighbor who's got a motorbike parked here and he had his motorbike stolen. And off his own back, he used his tracker on his bike to locate the bike, take it back off the thieves. Reparked his bike up somewhere else in this development. And two weeks later, two weeks after the theft, the thieves came back and re-stole his bike. He still had the tracker on, so he managed to again relocate his bike and recover his stolen bike. Now he parks it in a more secure lockup in this development. But even in a secure lockup, he has two locks on the back, two locks on the front wheel, and it's in a gate that is so strong it honestly wouldn't look out of place in Fort Knox. The world we live in, eh? Define special. That's always the, the really difficult thing about trying to explain a motorbike when you're, you're reviewing it or even when you're just taking a press bike out for a day because that feeling of special is subjective. So here in the English countryside on these tiny little country lanes that haven't changed in a hundred years this feels really special. It feels so special, it's genuinely almost difficult for me to put it into words, but I think it just feels right here. Probably this Norton here, out in the beautiful, unspoilt countryside here in England, it probably feels more right than any other bike I've ridden ever in a specific situation. It's, it's that intangible thing where just every slight opening of the throttle, every crest of the hill you pass, every time you stop and look at it in these settings, it's just perfect. I'll, I'll go into how highly I rate this bike from a, a bike point of view in the review video, which will be in about two videos time. But from the, the simple point of view of 
how special does it make you feel? Yeah, it's, it's right up there. <sighs> okay, I have, I've wasted enough time just whizzing along this path. I need to go and, go and meet Monica. She is waiting for me now. It's nine minutes away. How can a car like that be driving past at the, at the exact time I arrived? This is the village of Ainsford, literally just outside the M25. London can't be more than 22 miles away in X direction, but you've got this beautiful old bridge here, and then you've got a Ford or a, a fairly low stream going underneath it. So if you're brave enough, and if you have the right kind of car, you just drive straight through it. I tried that once with a Triumph Street Scrambler and I lost my nerve and I ended up having to put my feet down in about that much water. This is a, a ludicrously stunning little village. It's like, this is why it fits the Norton so well, what I was saying. It's just a little piece of history just stuck in time that has never changed. It's like the most beautiful parts of Great Britain. to this pub in the written description but it's amazing the plow is one of these pubs where in every third or fourth village you get a pub a pub a pub called the plow they're everywhere this one is especially good you know i was thinking just before getting on the norton this is going to be the last bike that i have before I pick up the Bonneville in about two weeks time. And I love getting press bikes because you can, you know, try loads of different bikes and it's, it's a brilliant excuse to be able to try any bike you fancy. 
but it also means that it's much, much harder to do any Euro trips. And I realize I haven't actually ridden my own bike abroad for almost a year to the day. Almost a year to the day, I headed off from Morocco, which is the, the last trip that ended up destroying the Bonneville. So it's come almost full circle. I mean, it's amazing to think that it's been almost a year that the start of the issues with the Bonneville happened. And then, of course, I would have it for about a week and it would break down again. And it took a while to figure out what happened. The whole saga has taken a year, almost to the day. What it also means is, when you don't have your own motorbike, things that I didn't really appreciate. For example, Monica and I, we were thinking about going to Amsterdam when, when we had the classic 350. I mean, this is how long ago it was. So we were pretty much set to go to Amsterdam. We book everything last minute. And I thought, oh God, last minute, about three, three days before we we're planning on going, Maybe I should just mes message Royal Enfield just to let them know, okay, by the way, I'm going to be taking your, your bike abroad. So I mes messaged them and said, yeah, by the way, off to Amsterdam in about three days time, I hope that's fine. They said, no, 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 no. You need to get a special piece of paper now if you want to ride a press bike over in Europe. Because of Brexit, basically, you have to have paperwork for everything, whether you're importing something to another country, and we found this with the tool rolls, or even if you've got a marketing bike. So I wouldn't have to do it if I had my Triumph Bonneville, but if you've got a press bike, that's seen as some kind of business and you need paperwork. So basically, it's too much hassle. I can't take any international trips until I get the Bonneville back. Otherwise, you have to rely on the marketing companies to be able to do the paperwork for you. Yeah, which is a shame because we would have done Amsterdam a few months ago, but two weeks time. I've seen some of the updates on, on Joe's channel. What the Bonneville is going to look like. Excitement levels are so high it's stupid and I need to try and calm down because otherwise I'm not going to be sleeping for the three to four days leading up to it. just behind me the setting so nice this is st martin's church this has a properly interesting history i was just learning about over lunch william conqueror and his victory at the battle of hastings in 1066 as a thank you to the norman knights william the conqueror gave one of the high level knights called umspak the land of ainsford as a thank you for all the hard work he did during the battle of hastings Unspak's son, Ralph, then inherited Ainsford and he built a castle and a church. So this is around about 900 years old. There have been parts that have been changed and adapted, but this is, in essence, uh, a Norman church, I mean a British church, but built by the Norman knights. And it's on the site of an old Saxon church, right here in the heart of Ainsford. I love this, it's like going back in time. So this is a little village store and they've got everything from some antiques, some food, and the little jars of sweets like sherbet, sherbet lemons and those old flying saucers. I remember getting those as a child, but I haven't seen them in so long. It's like a, a kind of bric-a-brac shop with little bits of everything. And on the shelves at the very back of the store, you've got things like jars of coffee, dishwasher tablets, PG tips, just like it was, what, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago.
I've got a great story about Ainsford Bridge just behind me. There was a famous music composer called Philip Warlock. Around a hundred years ago he lived and he lived in the town of Ainsford for a few years and he became infamous for his crazy house parties, alcohol-fueled lifestyle, having many girlfriends and having a strong belief in the supernatural. He used to walk around town either after a house party half drunk, still completely out of his mind, in a Jesus-style suit, Jesus robes. And one day, his most infamous stunt that gave Ainsford quite the name at the time, he rode over that bridge on his motorbike completely naked. There isn't, I'm sad to say, the happiest ending to that story because just a few years later, in his flat in Chelsea, he ended up killing himself. Sorry, that can't be a happy ending. I've been waiting for the right bike to show off Quadlock's brand new product, and it's this, the Handlebar Mount Pro Chrome. I always pair all of my Quadlock setups with this, the vibration dampener, but this is out now, and it's a brand new product, and this is how it looks. So you can see there the, the chrome accents on this part of the Quadlock setup, and also, even on, the handlebar attachments, all beautiful shiny chrome, and with retro style bikes, it works so well. And of course, vibration dampener there to protect the phone's internals, but it looks so nice. Along with those chrome surrounds of the clocks. So that definitely is the setup of choice on the Norton. I think it will also be my new setup once I get the Bonneville back. When the Normans were given this land, they decided to build the castle and the church with flint because it was everywhere. And it's true, literally a centimetre below all of this soil, flint covering everywhere. Right, we will wrap it up. Oh, summer's here. I mean, this is, this is the thinnest biking jacket I've got. I've got nothing thinner and I'm already sweltering. That's just such a nice spot. Right, we'll wrap it up there. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming along. I've got a week left with the Norton. I think the next video I'm going to try and take it on a, a properly long ride, maybe a, a five hour ride. Let's see how I cope with that saddle. Thanks so much, everyone, for coming along. Have a brilliant week, and we'll see you all in the next one. <laughs>